Hi, I'm Katin Kabir. I'm a journalist and I will be the moderator of the Egypt discussion we are going to have here. We are really proud to have journalists Abdullah El Shemi and Reina Netjes here for you. Abdullah is uh, a reporter for Al Jazeera Ara uh, Arabic um, and was jailed for 10 months. He got out after a long hunger strike in June. Reina Netjes was a correspondent in Egypt, knew she was, uh, was uh, uh, going to be arrested, I'm sorry, and escaped the country in time. She was sentenced in absentia to 10 years. I'm going to talk to the both of them about what happened, what they're do, do, doing now, and how this affected them. And later on, we will be joined by, by André van Es. She's president of the National UNESCO Commission. And we will talk about the current situation in Egypt for journalists in general, which is not uh, good. Of course, there will be plenty of room for your questions. But first, let's welcome Abdullah El Shemi and Reina Netjes. Abdullah, I, I read in an interview that when you were in prison, you had this list of places you wanted to go with your wife, who is here as well, once you got out. I'm sure Amsterdam was not on your list, was it? <laughs> well, uh, it, it wasn't. Uh in the first place, I was mostly about uh, uh, new destinations, uh, you know, adventure and uh, uh, places to forget about the whole jail experience. But uh, uh, Amsterdam has been good. Thank you. <laughs> well, did, did you did you get to go to one of those places that were actually on your list, or or not yes, yet? Yes, yes, I okay. did. Okay. Oh, I'm glad. It, it was the Maldives, yes, and I went there. Oh, I'm really glad. I hope you get to go to all of them. Thank you. Can you tell us about your arrest in August 2013? You were working, you were reporting. What, what, what happened? Well, I, I, I um, came to Egypt uh, 1st of July 2013, and I was uh, uh, covering uh, what was happening in Egypt at that time for Al Jazeera Arabic. Uh, I was in the country from the 1st of July up till the 14th of August when the uh, Rabah massacre took place. Uh, on that day, I was just covering events at the square like any other day. And then, uh, of course, uh, we all know what happened on that day when security forces stormed the place and killed almost a thousand uh, people. And then at the end of the day, I was uh, leaving the place and um, at one of the checkpoints, uh, army personnel uh, asked me for my ID. I had my passport, Egyptian passport, and uh, he was looking into the passport and uh, he found a lot of visas and it was, you know. Uh, Were you recognizable as a journalist? No, at that no, time? no, because I didn't have any uh, journalism equipment with me at that time. I was just alone, not even with my cameraman. So he, it was, it, it all started. Uh, by some security check, and then it ended up like, uh, you know, like how all we know, 10 uh, months in prison. Uh, it, it, it all, he, he doubted that I might be uh, what he called a spy because I, 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 I was doing a lot of travels. So uh, that's how it started. Yes. Was this something you feared at that point? I mean, was it something you... Or, or, you see, uh, during the whole time in Rabaa and even... I, I actually covered uh, events in Tahrir and Ittihadiya, uh, the presidential palace as well. I was covering both sides. Uh, actually, I was I, I had the thought that I might I might get killed, but I, that wasn't really my uh, my fear, my utmost fear. But uh, my f most fear was getting in, imprisoned. I didn't want that to happen because we all know the very nice reputation, Egypt, uh, reputation Egyptian police has. And uh, when it happened, at that moment, I thought, uh, I'm not, I, I, I was actually out of ideas. I, I thought that uh, my life ended at that point and never realized uh, how long uh, I will be in jail. Of course. 
Irena, I said you escaped the country in time. How did you know you were going to be arrested or you feared that you were going to be arrested? Well, um, well, we already um, got a little bit scared when we heard um, the end of December, 29 December, that um, three uh, Al Jazeera English correspondents were arrested. And with one of them, I just had a, conversa had had a conversation just like 10 days before that. So uh, I was in Amsterdam, but uh, I decided to go back to Egypt a little bit uh, later. Um, and uh, I came back to Egypt uh, for the referendum, and Sander van Horn from NOS Journal, I was his producer, came also. He came from uh, Beirut. But on the, on the same evening already, um, we had some trouble, and, and um, the police were checking uh, uh, IDs, but uh, um, they, were, they uh, let us go. Then, uh, a few days later, um, I found, out, I found out on Twitter that they were looking now for two British journalists and a Dutch uh, journalist. And uh, there weren't so many lady, Dutch journalists? No, journal and there were not. And um, they, 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 they didn't put names, but they said, we found equipment, we found money, we found falsified uh, videos, and a whole list of crimes. And the journalists were staying in the Marriott. And Yes, some people asked me, is it you? I said, no, because all, all these accusations, there's none of them that applies uh, uh, on me. So I had no idea that they, they, they were looking for me. But then the embassy uh, uh, tried to find some information and they got a number, a passport number from the Egyptian authorities in the end, which happened to be my tax number in the Netherlands. So we knew that they were after me. They had my passport copy. That's, uh, yeah. And then you went to... Uh, what did you do? Um, okay, then uh, when the MC let me know, Rina, um, can you come to the MC as quick as possible? And uh, I live like I live like one hour away from the MC, and there are a lot of checkpoints in Cairo. And I thought, oh, it, this this arrest warrant is already out for terrorists. Now I, there is a big chance that they will catch me, and uh, I'll be in in prison uh, in Torah. And I know what's happening. There's also rapes and torture and everything, so yeah, it was really scary. I packed my stuff, and the embassy would send a car, but it took very long, and it was one long hour. And with the car from the embassy, you don't have to go through the checkpoints. You know, so you, you feel more safe at least. They, they, will, they will respect that more than if you, if you just go You can't go with be any, sure, um, but it's yeah, at least yes, it's safe. Yes, yes. But even uh, I had to go um, from my apartment to uh, the car, and because the car could not come in front of the apartment, and that, then I had to walk through a checkpoint. So I thought I was really scared that you know they would stop me, ask for my passport and everything. But that did not happen. The 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 checkpoints in Cairo can also be sometimes very loose, you know, like the, or or they exactly take the wrong people. I'm sorry, they, you know, like they, they take tourists or they they take journalists and and terrorists get the real jihadists get through. For example, it's not so uh, so clever always what's happening there. Yeah, and so you got to the embassy, and that's how you got out. Abdullah, you said already the, the prisons in Egypt are notorious. You've been in, in several prisons, one of them which is well, the worst in the country. What, what were the conditions under which you were kept? Well, I, I mean, I think people can look at this picture, the one by the right. Right, this before is, this and is, this after. Is, this, is one of the, this is the background of, of a prison cell, so you do know how uh, prisons in Egypt are. I actually went through four jails. Uh, it was like uh, the, the very first two were uh, northeast of Cairo in, a, in an area Please called... Please close the door quickly because it's a lot of noise. Uh, in an area called Abu Zabel. Uh, and then f that was for the first four months. And then for the last six months, it was in Tura. Tura is, 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 a, is a small town in, uh, you know, uh, west of, w southwest of Cairo. But... Uh, it's very famous for its complex of prisons, almost eight jails inside that complex. I was, uh, I stayed in uh, Stebal Tora, that was uh, uh, one of them. Uh, it literally means uh, the reception prison where you, get, you go for the first time. And then for the last uh, one month and a half, I was uh, in the maximum security prison in a solitary confinement. It's called the Scorpion Prison. Uh, of course, it, it, prisons in Egypt generally uh, do not uh, relate anything to humanity. You have a lot, yeah, first of all, you have a lot of 
people in a very small area in a very uh, small how space. How many people are there? I, I, I mean, I remember in our own case, we were in like 20 square meters. We were uh, 82 people. So of course, people had to take turns into sleeping. It was only, uh, uh, it was not actually a toilet. It was, uh, you know, a room divided into four partitions and we made uh, small uh, toilets. And of course, you can imagine when you have 82 people, they have to use that uh, uh, yeah, facility. And of course, people have to take turns into either showering or washing their clothes. It was, so either from the aspect of, uh, space or uh, medical conditions, uh, medical care, uh, even when it came to, uh, you know, ordinary necessities like uh, water and food, it's, it's, it's something that's even below terrible because uh, in, the, in the end, when, when you have almost over 20,000 people in jail, they don't care if one or 10 or even 50 die because in the end, they're all just numbers in their own records. So they didn't really care for, for that. And, and, I, and, I, and I witnessed a case uh, in January last year when an old man uh, got uh, a cardiac arrest, you know, a heart failure problem, uh, and he was kept for almost six hours without a doctor, and then, of course, he died. In the end, people were knocking the doors of the cell, mm -hmm. and uh, this, this is how it is in Egypt. Yeah. So there is no any respect even for your uh, humanity in the first place. There's no respect for your education. Uh, there's no respect, respect for your age. There's no respect, respect for anything at all. And, and, and prison officials are given unlimited uh, authority on doing whatever they want to do. Th there's torture as well, of course, in Egyptian prisons. Is that something that, that happened to you as well? It happened in, in the beginning when I was uh, transferred to uh, Abu Zabal military prison um, uh, when, when they were calling the names of the new inmates uh, and then my name came up uh, one of the officials said so you are uh, the guy they've been speaking about on tv the, the journalist from al jazeera and then he told uh, you know his um, his uh, colleagues take care of him and of course we know what take care of him means in egypt you know uh, you know been the subjected. fact that there was so much attention for your case you that was why they Yes, that, because that that was just it's like uh, a revenge. That was just four days after my arrest, and uh, you know, they, they, there was this whole psychological uh, impact on those people because of the Egyptian media was using the whole opportunity of what was happening in the country to tell them that it's these foreign journalists, this foreign media that was, you know, th that were the reason behind what was happening in the country, and of course they were using that, like you said, uh, to avenge from oh. journalists. And actually, it, it wasn't only me. The, the, I wasn't the only journalist in that case. We have uh, Mahmoud Abdul Shakur Shawkan, who is uh, now for jail over 600 days. Oh. He was arrested that very same day, and he was my cellmate. And up till now, he's been in jail for no reason as well. You went on a hunger strike for a long time. You, was it like the only thing you could do to, to protest. It was. It was because I don't believe there is any kind of justice in Egypt. In Egypt, I mean, I'm not speaking for myself. I think things speak for themselves. Uh, facts speak for themselves in Egypt when we see that we've, we have thousands of people who've been in jail for almost two years without even being referred to court. And we know all how courts work in Egypt. There is no any matter of uh, justice or even common sense. Uh, I mean, the last of these cases, I remember, uh, 11 young students were uh, arrested last year during the holy month of Ramadan, you know, when Muslims fast or abstain from food. They were arrested while uh, breaking their fast. They did nothing at all, and, and they were sentenced to 15 years in jail. So you can imagine how crazy the country has become. Yeah. And we see what happened to you. This is before you went to prison. Um, this is, well, this is still in prison, right? Because you yes, said, yeah, yeah. Yes. This was actually about a month and a half before I got out of right, jail. Yes. Right. And um, is the fact that you did this hunger strike, is that why you got out? Because I believe so. You, I uh, believe so because uh, before I did the hunger strike, I was, uh, you know, I was in jail for almost five months and uh, there were, were always the usual uh, 
court uh, hearings and uh, my detention was just renewed for 45 days without any uh, any you know any, any chance giving for for bail or any way out of the whole thing all the requests for my uh, release and even for me to see my lawyer were denied so i thought that was the only way out and uh, i was supported by my wife by my family by my by of course by uh, everyone I knew outside and, and the support. Because you could keep in, I mean, you, you could write or you could see each other. I, I mean, did you keep in contact when you were in prison? Did you know how, how Well, I used to see my wife and uh, my family uh, every now and then. It was mostly once a week. Uh, when I was uh, uh, moved to the maximum security prison, it was even harder. We would uh, see probably once every two or three weeks and uh, it would be through a glass uh, wall and they would listen yeah i mean you speak to, to your wife through a telephone and of course the uh, prison officials would listen to you and uh, it was even harder but i think even when she started uh, her own hunger strike that was about an, a month and a half after my uh, own hunger strike i think even that made me stronger and i think when when, when I was transferred to the maximum security prison, as hard as it looks and, and, and as terrible it, as it was, but I think when I later knew that people outside, even in Egypt, the local media was starting to pay attention to, to my own case, I think that even made me more determined. And I think if, 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 the, if it was not efficient, we wouldn't have seen the Egyptian government through the Ministry of Interior uh, spreading lies and making up false news about me not being on hunger strike or, or claiming uh, any sort of life. It's because it was such a problem for me. Yes. Are you now completely recovered, both mentally and physically, from what you've been through? Well, I think mentally it will have its own impact uh, for a long time, because uh, it's not every day you go to jail. But uh, uh, physically, yes, I am better. Uh, I, I do medical checks uh, every few months to make sure everything is fine. Uh, I never know what the future may hold, but uh, I try not to think about the prison experience because I don't want this to stop me from carrying on with my life. Oh. Reina, you you are sentenced in absentia to 10 years. You can never, or well, you don't know what happens in Egypt, but you can't go back to Egypt. No, I can't come back, but I can also not travel to, the, to Africa or the Arab world. Actually, to many countries, I can't travel, only... Um, uh, in the European Union, it's okay, but compared to why the experience, can't you travel to Africa? Um, because um, there are extraditement uh, uh, possibilities. Um, yes. We hope Egypt. Did you check like every country if they have these? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, not uh, not yet. But we know we know from uh, other uh, journalists that they uh, are um, advised uh, through lawyers in London and also. Uh, Actually, my lawyer is here uh, tonight as well. He, uh, André Sebrecht, he also uh, invited, <laughs> uh, ec, um, uh, explained to me that, ex uh, um, advised me, <laughs> it's a bit late, yeah. uh, advised me to not to travel, you know, to countries where yeah, Egypt, um, uh, like like Africa or, or the Middle East, is, it's it's um, it's uh, risky, and um, so and we is really it difficult have to for you. Yeah, because very, of, yeah. very, very. It really limits uh, your your space of. Uh, uh, of movement, movement, you can actually not do your work anymore. And um, through this experience, um, we, we, we lobbied so much uh, the last year in, in European Parliament, in, um, in the European Council, in, in The Hague, and um, my British colleagues in, in the UK, Foreign Office, and, and in America, and everywhere. And w what's actually very surprising is that the West um, has probably not enough tools to even uh, get their, their, their own citizens uh, out of jail, because there are still some Western Egyptians in jail uh, now. Peter Gresta got out, but he later said, it's, it's bec mainly because all my colleagues made so much noise about the case. Of course, I thank all the diplomats as well, but mainly because the media is keeping up. The journalists wrote about this, him, this the case all the time. That's, he, he believes that was the main reason that he got out. And yeah. um, that's why we are here, of course, tonight yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes. No, actually, Abdullah. I just want to add one thing is that I and Reina had people to look, look, look out for us, people to back us up, but we have 
a lot of journalists who, who don't have anyone to speak for them. That's why the pressure is, is, is very necess important for, for it to, carry, to, to continue because people like uh, Shaukan or uh, Abdullah Al Fakharani, Samhi Mustafa, these are ordinary city, uh, journalists, Muhammad Adli, Muhammad Sultan, they don't have a big organization or a big country to look for them. Yes. And that's why what we are doing today and all the support, all the noise should uh, continue till they are out as well because they need Especially it. Especially the local journalists who yes. don't have Al Jazeera or the, the, well, the, big, the Western yeah. countries to, to, yes. to help them. Exactly, yeah. and I, I like to add something. It, it's even worse. So we hear now in the Netherlands that uh, the biggest uh, political party uh, of the Netherlands, VVD, uh, advice is to not raise a finger anymore uh, against the CC or to not to, you know, uh, to any so dictator. To any dictator, and he um, also mentions uh, Egypt very explicitly, because uh, he believes that probably that uh, that CC brings stability. But if you look at the figures, um, in the last 22 months we had over 700 attacks in Egypt. Uh, so the last 22 months, 700, and the 22 months before, it was only 90. So the, the figures show the opposite. Uh, and we know what, what supporting dictators in the past also um, brought us. So um, I find it very hard to believe to, to put this strategy. But uh, apart from that, it's for the Egyptians who are in jail. And then Western politicians say we should not even raise a finger against these dictators. Is, uh, is a very uh, sad uh, thing, I believe. Abdullah, you now work in Doha. Did you ever doubt when you got out if you still wanted to be a journalist, or were you certain? Well, I, I think journalism has, all be, uh, has always been my passion. And um, when I think if, if time goes back, I think I, I will still carry on with, with the whole journalism um, uh, profession, because I think journalism is not just about uh, being able to uh, work, uh, you know, do your work easily. I think it's because of the right of people to know what's happening. Because uh, ordinary human beings uh, have their own unheard and untold stories to be told. That's why we have to carry on with the job. And the sacrifices that are made, I think in the end, in the end uh, yes, I, I was in jail for 10 months, but it's nothing compared to those who've been in jail for over two years now and who've been sentenced to life imprisonment for those who even gave out their lives for, for the risk of um, getting the information out. Yes, I, I want to carry on with this. Oh, okay. Reina, you now work from Amsterdam, uh, cov still covering Egypt. How do you do that? Is that, is that possible? Uh, well, I, I still have my network in Egypt, and they tip me uh, when there is news, and I know whom to trust. Uh, uh, and uh, I follow uh, Arabic media here very closely, so in that, in that combination. But of course, it's a bit different than when you were in Egypt. Um, but the situation in Egypt is, is very scary now. And also, um, especially for, the, for um, people who speak Arabic, they find this very suspicious. As a foreigner, if you speak Arabic, that's, um, yeah, th then you must be a spy. So that's um, a risk. I, I'm, I'm, I and for my your sources, yeah. is it sometimes maybe even easier because you are in Amsterdam and you are safe? Or, or is, doesn't it work like that? It, it definitely works like this. And so uh, I count my blessings. Uh, more people know me uh, now after this thing, which I, of course, hoped it would not have happened. But uh, people think, oh, she's in the free West. We, l let's go to her with this uh, source of uh, information, uh, with this information. and. Um, right. So that, uh, that definitely helps. And like uh, Abdallah is saying, I, w I will not stop with my work, uh, although I'm in the front li uh, line and even the Egyptian uh, security service is very active in the Netherlands, I experienced uh, now. How did you experience that? Um, well, um, uh, when I gave a TV interview and I I had some critical notes. Then I found out that some Egyptian journalists who probably work for the embassy, you can never prove that 100%, but they wrote horrible pieces about me in Egyptian media and Emirati media with a whole bunch of lies. For example, that they say that my radio, my former radio station, BNR, now officially put on the website that I have joined a terrorist in, uh, organization indeed. As a uh, news stuff like this. report. As a new, yeah, yeah, as a news report. It's going all over the Arab world and, and you know, with your picture big in, 
uh, on, online with it, so it's not so funny. Uh, are but, you scared uh, in here in Amsterdam even? No, I'm not scared. They will not uh, physically uh, do anything. And, you know, it, it, also, it also maybe makes clear that they really fear media. They're really not happy when you come out and tell the truth. It's it's a so big that's thing. That's your weapon. It's a it's big thing weapon. for dictators. They they don't want to be exposed. And um, like uh, Peter Booker of Human Rights Watch said, it also gives a certain amount of satisfaction to expose the dictators to to show their real face. You know, uh, they might say to Western politics, "Come, please uh, support us. Give us weapons. Give us money, because we have to fight the terrorists." But what they're mainly doing, fighting their opponents. It's true. But because also the Egyptian army released a lot of jihadis, uh, you know, which, which is not so much known, uh, but they, they really fight their opponents in the first place. Uh. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question, perhaps very difficult to answer, but still I try <laughs> to pose my question. I suppose that officially the juridical system, what's written on paper in Egypt would be fine, what's written on paper, official law. Uh, there's a big gap between the official law and practice. Those judges, the courts, will have, I suppose, have studied law before at time uh, getting their job. Uh, what makes it that all those judges who should know that what they are doing is unjust, according to their own laws, that it's built on lies, what they are doing, that they still do it. Are they forced? Are they fearing the government themselves? Are they corrupted by the government? What makes it okay. that all those judges who should know that what they are doing is not according your, your to the law? Your question is clear. Th yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, you, you see that the whole judicial system in Egypt is, is built on generation of family members. <laughs> For example, you, it, it's very common to see a, a judge in Egypt with his own children, with his own uh, relatives, cousins, or you know, family members, either brothers or even grandchildren, been in the judiciary as well. So it's kind of a network of a mafia. Uh, the way mafia is organized. I'm not saying that out of uh, my own uh, feelings, but that's that's how it's happening in Egypt. And definitely, there's there there, there has been uh, some kind of interest, a common interest between the judiciary and uh, the uh, government. And for that, for those interests, uh, either uh, you know uh, uh, any sort of benefits, uh, be sorry, benefits or entitlements to uh, be kept. Uh, the judiciary usually, uh, uh, you know, uh, gets uh, uh, ordered by the government to uh, give out those sentences. You see, uh, it has it has been proving even in the local media that the judiciary is corrupt uh, either the, uh, into uh, the benefits they uh, get or for uh, some of them have vast amount of lands or different sort of, uh, you know, uh, possessions. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, I believe the judiciary is mostly in Egypt. The, the, the reason uh, they are, uh, you know, um, walking in that way is, is just about their own interests. Because uh, during the, uh, the time of Mohammed Morsi in, in power for one year, they, uh, they were actually uh, uh, fighting back against him because he wanted to amend the, the judicial uh, system. And that, uh, you know, for example, you could see judges up to the age of 70 and 75 in Egypt. And that uh, is, 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 is intentional because it allows them to uh, keep the, the, those benefits. And of course, you know, when, when, that, when this network of uh, common interests uh, intercross between the government and the judiciary, it's very common for you to see the judiciary, uh, you know, been uh, controlled by the government. So it's 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 about that network of interests. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you short. Want to <laughs> short. Okay. So I want to go to Andre van it. Uh, I'll keep it very short. Um, what's also a proof is that some some um, conversations from the office of, of Sisi have been leaked, and this has been investigated and uh, by a British uh, forensic uh, institute, and they turn out to be. True, genuine, 
And in this CC leaks, you can hear that the generals are speaking among each other. We actually don't have a case against Morsi. We don't have a case, but we have to come up with them. We have to make something up. Uh, uh, we have to uh, create something. And then they, they, they decide to ask the Minister of Interior to write a letter um, and, and uh, dated 10 years in advance that uh, th uh, this building where, where Morsi is held is, uh, is a prison and so on. I mean, you can hear how they are making up a case against Morsi. They themselves are afraid they don't have anything. And we have other um, uh, examples of that. Uh, in the, there, the, there's more in the CCTV. There, there was actually another example was, I, I will make that uh, fast. Uh, we had the case of uh, the 38 people who were killed uh, in Abu Zabal prison, the ones who were, who were killed in the, tr in the security truck. Uh, almost uh, uh, four, four days after the Rabah massacre. In that very same conversation, Reina is talking about, uh, one of those officers who were responsible for the whole thing uh, was the son of one of the generals, and, and that general comes up, I mean, that, that's, that was all on live air, by the way, it was not uh, recorded even. Uh, he comes up to the, uh, to one of the uh, of the eighties of Abdel Fattah Sisi and told and tells him that my son will go to prison. He tells him, "Don't worry, we're going to speak to the judge, to set him free." And that happened, uh, you know, eventually. And that shows how, like, just like Reina said, uh, how free the judiciary is in Egypt. I would like to ask Andrea Fanes to join us. Please welcome her. We are going to discuss the current situation in Egypt a bit more. You, but first, you are president of the National UNESCO Commission. Maybe not everybody knows. Of course, we know UNESCO, but the National Commission, maybe yeah. you can tell us. Yes, that's, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's a kind of secret, but it's uh, really <laughs> something uh, most people don't know uh, what it is. And I must be honest to you, I didn't know um, when they asked you <laughs> before, yes, when they, when they asked me to be president of the Dutch National UNESCO Commission. Uh, UNESCO is one of the UN organizations, and it's the only UN organizations, organizations which is, um, in which is uh, uh, member states, all the member states are um, obliged to install an independent national commission uh, to support the UNESCO goals and UNESCO like uh, education, science, and cultural and information uh, and communication um, uh, goals to support that in the well in the in the in the member states. Yeah, right. So and uh, when we're talking about communication and information, that that's why UNESCO is um, well is a very strong uh, an initiator of, for example, the the, the freedom press um, the press freedom day and all those activities UN UN activities because. Um, protection of journalism and journalists, freedom of the press, um, that's uh, one, of, well, one of the core Key. issues of And maybe UNESCO. most people don't know that either. I mean, no, no, the, the science and the education and the culture, that's, I think, yes. well known. But this freedom of speech no. part is also key yes. for UNESCO. Yes. Yeah. UNESCO, in, in the Western world, mostly, most people know about cultural heritage, for example. But education is even... <coughs> already right. uh, difficult. Yeah. And then uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, the freedom of the press and protect protection of journalists, I think the, well, the, the, um, the scorecard of UNESCO is not a very strong one, to be honest, because, um, well, what, you, what you've stated is, and what you, make, you too make very, very clear, is then when you talk about uh, the situation of the press freedom in the world, well, what we learned this, this evening, um, again, is that 2014 was the worst year uh, ever, uh, and the situation is getting worse. Uh, and uh, and we depend very much, I, th I would say mostly, on the courage of individual individual journalists like you, um, and uh, the peer pressure of your colleagues and organizations. Uh, to support you when you need it. And UNESCO is a member state organization, so all, what you said about Egypt and, and, the, and, the, and the policy of uh, Dutch uh, political parties, um, uh, UNESCO, what, what happens is that, uh, for example, there's a whole list of Egyptian journalists who are in jail, and what will happen is that the director general of, the, of UNESCO will ask for information or will condemn this situation, and I checked it. 
There's no answer whatsoever. Okay, and then it so. just is left like that. Until now, yes. And now, until, well, you before, until you before, until you. Yes. Well, what what uh, well what makes me uh, uh, well, a little bit more hopeful is that it's uh, the urgency of the situation of journalists is now um, acknowledged much more also in the UNESCO in the different UNESCO member states. Um, so there will be more, much more activities for the Dutch government also within UNESCO, but also the uh, policy of the Dutch uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. It's becoming m a more important issue. Um, so there will be more activities, stronger, stronger activities, and also like for the Dutch National Committee, I will make sure that we can work together with other national committees to to make sure it gets higher on the agenda. Yeah, put more pressure put on, more not pressure, just yes. ask, but Which, make yes, sure you get the definitely, yes, yeah. yeah, I would um, like to add something also, because on the other hand, you see that Egypt is um, has a very active PR machine now working uh, towards uh, the whole world. For example, now the Egyptian uh, pope, pope is in the Netherlands, uh, Tawadrus, and uh, last week, uh, the Grand Mufti was in the Netherlands, yeah. and uh, both do statements, like uh, the Pope um, um, said that all the terror groups in the Middle East, uh, all of them, from Boko Haram to ISIS to Qaeda and everything, mm -hmm. they are creation of the West. <coughs> That's what the Pope is selling to the country. That's what Egyptian officials are selling to the country. Mm -hmm. That's what, what the Azhar is selling to the country. So they, they, they are, uh, so it's, it's very hard to see that, that Western politicians work together with this regime with saying inside the country the most horrible things about us. And we are, you know, Believing that giving the them money, mm -hmm. giving them support, giving them weapons to continue all this, this, this madness. Actually, yeah. So th yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm very glad to hear um, what you just mm -hmm. uh, said, and uh, I just like to uh, to to picture that uh, the Egyptians are very much uh, with the PR yeah. machine. Machine, for example, Sisi was in Spain this week, and uh, Spain now said we support Egypt's bid for the UN security seat. Yeah. Even uh, I don't know what kind of deals they made over there, but mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they're so actively, uh, very mm -hmm. actively um, with the PR. Yeah. I don't know if Abdullah agrees uh, with me. Uh, Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned a few journalists who are still in prison now in Egypt. Does anyone of you know how many journalists are are at this moment? I, th I think in numbers, prison? numbers. Uh, th th there is no actually any official source, but um, of course. from different groups working on this case, I think it's between seventy to hundred mm -hmm. journalists in Egypt, and some of them have been sentenced to that death. Many, it, yeah. Yes, some some of them have been sentenced to death. That was last month and some others have been sentenced to life, life imprisonment, imprisonment. and it's, it's, it's getting worse. And, and I would like to add one thing is these, the, most of these journalists are young men who believed in, in, in the Egyptian revolution and believed that uh, the West might help them in, 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 in achieving those uh, goals they, 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 they fought for. But I think uh, if, if really this support doesn't come I think I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but I'm think I think the West will regret it because most of these people, young men, not just journalists, are being radicalized, are being mm. turned to the kind of people we don't want to have in the Middle East because they believed in democracy and in freedom, and they fought hard for that, but unfortunately they were not supported, and a coup was allowed to take place, and uh, you know I mean you wouldn't I I don't say I, su I support that of course I don't support it but it's but, a but 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 it's 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 in inevitable because when you go to jail uh, for no reason when you get tortured you don't blame someone to come up with his own crazy ideas or he or his negative uh, view about the society. Are there any critical journalists left in Egypt, or is it is it possible, or maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah, I also want to add about the number of journalists. Yeah. Um, officially, the Egyptian uh, Journalist Syndicate says there are 18 jailed, and but the numbers are bigger because uh, some we don't we we don't uh, know um, if they are really working for a newspaper or, or whether they were freelancers. Websites. You know the the, right. the, the, mm. the the standards when you call somebody a newspaper uh, and um, mm -hmm. journalist or a photographer or, or not. But from uh, official. Um, Outlets there were 18, but they're probably more than that, uh, more because they were freelancing, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and and also probably and what's happening on social media. That's also uh, well, if you're an official journalist yes. or a blogger, exactly. who, yeah. who, who, 
Well, th then I like to add the following. People are getting arrested in the Emirates in Kuwait who put one negative tweet about Sisi. Oh. That, that bad so it is. Exactly. Already. Yeah. They, they get prisoned in the Emirates when uh, that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't answer your, your last question. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Um, we talked about pressure. You said UNESCO put, put on more pressure. You said, uh, like, uh, the, the, the Liberal Party, that's what Halbe Zelstra said about not... Um, Intervening. Uh, in, yeah. um, what can the general public do? Is there anything we can do, you know, if we're concerned? Does it help if we, you know, support... Twitter uh, actions, or what do you think, Abdullah? I, I think every single word really matters because it, it did matter in my own case and in the case of my colleagues in Al Jazeera English. And I think it still matters because uh, if if not for the pressure, not just because of journalists, uh, I, I think uh, Reina was talking about the huge PR machine that the Egyptian regime has been, uh, uh, you know, using to uh, change their image uh, in the West. I think it's all because of the pressure, but I think n no matter what kind of PR they, they walk towards, facts will still be facts because mm -hmm. what's happening on the ground is, is something totally different. And it's, it, it's, 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 it's us, it's uh, those in, in, in Egypt, either in jail or those being oppressed, rely on us because they know that uh, every single world, I, I, I mean, I, honestly, the Egyptian regime is so fragile and weak, even more than we think. Uh, a single uh, column in a newspaper or an online website makes them go crazy because, uh, like uh, you were saying about the about dictatorships, I think you know dictator uh, uh, the Egyptian dictatorship is trying to convey a message of stability and uh, of well being loved by the people. But I think. It's, that's not happening, and because that's not happening, I think uh, that's why we, we, we need to keep uh, up with the pressure. Mm -hmm. or unfortunately, we will see uh, journalists and ordinary uh, young and old people, uh, men back uh, in, in jail, mm -hmm. uh, being kept for years for no reason. Mm -hmm. and so well, I think, well, let, let me give you one example of what, what, what UNESCO also does, is to support uh, this project, to support journalists, but also bloggers or people active on social media, to train them uh, to get like more protection uh, with um, en encryption uh, on, on internet, but also really physically training and and, and, and be protected. Um, and we work together with uh, Free Press Unlimited, of course, and uh, uh, one of the persons of Free Press Unlimited, I'm, I'm very glad, she is now the chairperson, Albana Shada, she is, she's a Dutch woman. She's the chairperson of this program, this, this UNESCO program, which I think is very good. And um, it's very good that what Free Press and Unlimited does is also to support um, people in journalists in uh, many countries of the world. And what your, your question, what people can do, of course, also, if is by donating money to Free Press Unlimited support to support in this way to support yeah. these projects. I think they're very, very in, uh, important. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if we talk about actions on, like, on internet now, where should we go? Is there uh, a campaign? I mean, going on right now for people who are imprisoned in Egypt, where, where we have donate money? Okay. What else? Like practical. Things. Yes, I, I read on the T-shirt of Abdallah Sultan. Uh, free oh, nice. uh, Sultan is. Uh, it's, it's, it, it actually holds uh -huh. the name of all journalists detained in Egypt. Uh -huh. Detained oh, in Egypt. Really? Nice. And uh, I think what we can do uh, the least is make noise. I know uh, every single person here or anyone on the internet might say I'm I am just one person and what will I do? But I think it's that one person that initiates the the whole uh, thing and, and and from that point. It grows up and, and it makes uh, a lot of difference. But I, where? Where should they, you know, if you want to be that one extra voice? See, unfortunately, there is there's no one place to, yeah. to, to join all those efforts together. But uh, but uh, the, the uh, they are uh, different groups in Egypt. I'm not sure, uh, you know, I, I don't really have a list of names, but there are groups uh, in Egypt uh, that work towards uh, freedom of journalism. Uh, I think, uh, you know, 
because I remember when I was in prison, when I get to hear about that support, it, it does keep me on. Mm. It, it makes me carry it on. It, it really helps. helps. Yes, the support, yeah. the moral support really helps. Uh, I think, I mean, what you came up with now, it, what we should really work towards is having a platform or uh, somewhere where people can voice uh, their concerns and not just end up with uh, a few hashtags or, right. you know, uh, Facebook, Twitter posts. I think it should be more than that. Uh, and, I, and I think, you see, uh, also here in the West, we should uh, voice our complaints to the Egyptian embassy because, uh, you know, of course, you might say as well, uh, if I go and, you know, give them a letter, what will that, that do? No, I think it, one letter makes 10 letters, makes 100, makes 1,000, and it does make... Uh, a lot of difference, and just like another, you know, again, like Rena was saying, they, they they are really putting a lot of a, a huge effort into that PR machine. But when when that PR machine isn't working, I think it will. I mean, I mean, honestly, what I've been seeing since uh, the coup uh, took place in Egypt in 2013 is that there haven't really been any uh, pressure from the West. I think it all the statements were merely just for the sake of statements, they haven't really been uh, real pressure because real pressure really means uh, uh, a lot of things that will change in Egypt. And that's why, you know, from, from one person, uh, uh, things will grow up, but we, we have to uh, make that noise happen. Yeah. Okay. Questions, are there any questions? We have a microphone, can you go? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I wasn't here the whole evening. I was in the other uh, hall. <clears throat> but um, did you think of cooperating with International Pen? The Writers in Prison Committee of International Pen is, is very active. It's a very good platform. And uh, they are in London, but you will find them easily in the, uh, on the web. Uh, and. Uh, if you have any information that they might not have, I think it's very important to cooperate with them. And there's the International Federation of Journalists also, of course. And I think there is in Doha a center. Yes, there's a Media Freedom <laughs> Center, yes, you in know Doha. About that. Okay. okay, so thank I you. And there's a question here. Um, yeah, my question is for Mr. El, El Shami. Excuse my yes. um, pronunciation. Excuse your Arabic. <laughs> Arabic. It's perfect. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, is is what uh, did the events of last a couple of years uh, mean for your view of the West? And and uh, um, so, what was it before? Was it positive or negative? And how is it now? Uh, you mean in Egypt about what happened in Egypt, or or, or my personal experience? Um, well, both. Uh, oh, I, 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 I think, I think you're trying to. How do you look at the West? Uh, at this, yeah, is this a West? Regard to what happened. Yeah, I think you're referring to the idea of. Uh, uh, you mean the reaction of the West tw towards what happened in Egypt after the revolution? Uh, on, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but I think. Unfortunately, the West isn't supporting its own models or its own values that they call for towards democracy and freedom. If you don't support uh, those values in, in countries that want to achieve them, I think they won't happen. Uh, and yeah, my, my, my view is, is I, 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 don't, I don't want to be 100% pessimistic, but, uh, but uh, uh, I have uh, kind of lost faith in, in the West uh, uh, walking towards uh, helping those young generations achieve their <laughs> dreams of freedom and democracy. But I still hope that uh, they realize the problem that's been created now, not in, only in Egypt, but the whole Middle East, and they get to put a solution before it's too late. Mm. Abdullah, I asked Reina if she could go back to Egypt. I didn't ask you. You, you are Egyptian. Yes. C can you go back, or, or, or is it... Well, or have well, you been back? Or? No, I haven't been back since 10 months, since I uh, left jail. But uh, I think I, uh, you know, because the whole case is still ongoing, the, the case of uh, which I was just released on bail, I was right. not yeah. uh, referred to court. My name is still on the, uh, on the list 
So, uh, no, I can't go back to Egypt. Okay. You know what's also very funny or sad? Uh, this week there was another session in our trial, and then the judge said he did not know if Peter Grester, the Australian who was deported, who if was he was in Egypt or not, if he was in the in the in the court or not. Which, which, was which shows how ago. ignorant our judges are. He, you know, every the whole world knew that Peter Gresti was deported, and the judge doesn't know if Peter was deported or not. So it shows how okay. competent they are. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for being here, and if not, you're going to try to get UNESCO a bit firmer on this yes, point. Definitely. We will <laughs> hold you to that. It's good to, to realize that there, uh, the, uh, at this point, there are hundreds of events like this tonight right. in the world. Yes. And tomorrow and there tomorrow. will be like a big event yeah. in, in Riga and, in, and in Letland, which uh, I think is very good when you talk about pre international pressure. It's yes. what happens yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and just I think, I think the whole conversation has uh, got me to a point where I believe just like you said, uh, we need really somewhere where people can, can voice their concerns. And, and I believe uh, probably there's an idea in the making of, of probably a website or a campaign that should be uh, permanent uh, and working towards that goal of achieving the freedom of journalists, not just in Egypt, but mm. everywhere mm. across the world. Yeah. yeah. And we want your T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's uh, you know my friend, a friend of mine made the design, and I just printed it. But uh, okay, so it's, yeah. it's, yeah. no, no, but, but the design, the design, I, 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 it's it's on my Instagram and Twitter, so it's okay. It's, so it, anyone can use it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. And hopefully you will be able to go back to Egypt in the future and safe. You want to say Tahya Mosul? La. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a very moving picture. Yeah. Coming out of jail. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, it's a Did you already see Yes. Yes, we did. Thank you very much.